Welcome back. It is time for our favorite moment of the Saturday. Columbus Zoo joining us now. Sean, it is nice to see you. It's very nice. I, I haven't been with you guys here for the past couple of weeks. Emily's been showing you guys parts of the zoo, but I, I'm down at our new Adventure Cove area at the back of our Animal Encounters Village. Stingray Bay is right here. Mm -hmm. And you know what? one of the things we always want to do is connect people with wildlife. And those of you that know me over the years, tortoises are one of my favorite animals yes. out there. And we have a really cool, unique experience here at Adventure Cove where roughly around 9.30, 10 o'clock on warm days, Grouchy, our Sulcata tortoise, makes his walk from the back of house out to his yard for the, for the day. How long does it take him? You know, Grouchy is an interesting character. So <laughs> Sounds it. We, we, we trained him to walk this way, but he has his own kind of mindset on how he wants to do it. So some days it's really fast. Some days we're out here for 45 minutes as he just wanders around. Um, he's about 100, 120 pounds. So he really kind of makes up his own decisions on where he wants to go. But down here, you can already see guests kind of piling up down here to get this experience. Um, depending on how grouchy feels, sometimes guests can in interact and touch him. But it's just a unique way to, to really show guess an animal that is kind of out of the habitat and getting a unique experience. Is Grouchy in fact Grouchy? Um, you know, Grouchy has an interesting story. So a lot of times we don't take a lot of past family pets, but Grouchy actually came to us as a donation um, roughly about 10 years ago. And Aww. he was somebody's pet. You know, the thing with Sulcata's tortoises is they're roughly, when they're first born, they're about the size of your hand. So people do buy them in the pet trade. And then, unfortunately, they're the third largest tortoise found throughout the world. So, Grouchy, you can see here how big he is. He doesn't live in an aquarium anymore, obviously. And that's kind of the challenge that a lot of people have when they get these guys as pets. Yes, I can see the problem there. Is that one of the, <laughs> dang the, is that one of the dangers that they face? Yeah, so, so in the wild, luckily, their population is still pretty high. But they are constantly faced with that because they are becoming an animal that is more interested um, in the pet trade. They do have, obviously, populations. These guys are found in northern parts of Africa, um, very, very dry area, the grasslands parts there. Um, but, you know, I think I don't want to deter people from having pets. I just want you to do your homework. When this mm -hmm. animal is full grown, this is an animal that's not going to survive in your house anymore. And we just need to be prepared when we do that to understand what our succession plan is for an animal like this. Would you say that's pretty good warning for, like, anyone who's going, like, considering getting what they think is a turtle? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know, we have to rem remember that turtles and tortoises typically are going to outlive us. Um, <laughs> and so there is, there is a lot of challenges with that. There obviously are all different size of turtles, tortoises. Um, but, you know, any animal that you get, we want responsible pet ownership, obviously. Um, and, you know, when we get more to the exotic side, animals that you find in the zoos, I, I don't know that they always make the best pets. Um, people have success stories, but I think it's better to allow the animals here at the zoo where guests can come out. Um, these guys are getting an up close view. I, there's roughly 40, 50 people down here getting a unique experience now that, that they wouldn't get out of other parts of the zoo. These animals are coming out of their habitats, interacting face to face with us. And that's our goal. Our mission every day is to connect people with wildlife. I love that. And is there anything else going on at the zoo that we should know about? Yeah, so Zumbizi Bay is open. So that's always exciting. Um, but folks can go and learn. We have our late summer nights starting up. Um, there's a random, there's several dates out there that guests can come to the Zoom Easy Bay. Stays open till 10 o'clock. They have a lot of different events going on. Sometimes there's movies going on in the wave pool. So folks can always go to ClumbaZoo.org or Zumbizi Bay's website to learn more about that. Um, obviously, time ticketing is dissolving away. We're also opening it up to where guests can, can purchase a zoo ticket and come any day. They don't have to purchase it on a specific um, specifically for that day. So we're finally starting to get into that approach to where the zoo's coming back to life like we really want it to be. Yes, we're getting back to normal. Feels good. Sean, thank you so much. Thanks, guys.